treasures in today's video i'm going to walk you through 10 easy steps to start selling on ebay this is a video that i had pre-recorded but for whatever reason didn't record so i am creating this video live which i think actually will end up working out better in the long run because if there are any questions or comments in the chat then i can address those at the end i'm going to go through all 10 steps so that if you're here and you just want to get that there's nuggets of knowledge, then that's what's going to be front loaded. But if you want to hang out for any questions or any extra information that might come up that I forget or people remind me about or have questions about, then definitely hang out to the end when I jump into the chat. I just want to start off by saying I'm an ex elementary school teacher. I started staying home with my kids and started selling on eBay just to have extra money in my pocket. But now it is a huge part of my income. So I just want to say, that if I can do it, you can do it too. So getting over that hurdle, that first starting starting something new is always a little bit, um, there's always a bit of a trepidation. So believe me when I say, if I can do it, you absolutely can do this too. So let me start off by welcoming you, to, welcoming you to my channel. I make videos all about selling online, whether it's jewelry, things I thrift, garage sale, but it's definitely a great way to make extra income or even uh, a big piece of your actual income. So I would like for you to subscribe. And if you could share this video with somebody that you think might be interested in making some extra money online or might get uh, some good information from this video. And I thank you for that. All right, so let's jump into this right now. So let's say you, you've been thinking about selling on eBay, you've got some things around the house, and the first thing you need to do is decide what you want to sell. So what can you sell on eBay? Almost anything, unless it's illegal, pretty much anything. So I've got like knickknacks here. I've also got like, let's say you've got toys around the house. Maybe your kids got a present they didn't want. You're regifting something. Uh, I mean, just about anything, clothes, shoes, purses, candles. I mean, pick it up. You can list it most likely. Now, used lotion, probably not, but, you know, used electronics, probably so. So you can find all kinds of things around your house. You might be surprised. I did a video just the other day where I just grabbed a bunch of stuff from around the house and figured out, oh, if I listed all this stuff, it'd probably be about $700. So it's something you can definitely do, just finding things around the house to sell. Pardon me. So the second thing you need to do is to create an eBay account. And in the recorded video, I walked through a little bit, but I have a video on how to create an eBay account. Uh, it's really easy. You just go to eBay, you enter your email, and it, they walk you through the whole process. It's really easy to set that up. So I don't want to waste too much of the time walking you through how to set up an eBay account because I think it's probably pretty self-explanatory. If you get there and you feel like you need a little bit more help, please send me a message or leave a comment on this video and I can come back and do a new walkthrough because sometimes things change. It's true. All right. The, the next thing I'm going to screen share. Let me pull this up real fast. So the next thing that wrong page, hang on one more thing. I pulled up the wrong one. Pardon me. Let me clear that one out. This is what happens when you go live, right? Sometimes you mess up. Uh, where is it? I have the wrong thing open. Is this it? Let's see, there it is, okay. So the first thing you need to do when you've decided what you want to sell is to create photographs for this item. So when you are taking pictures of your, the, whatever you decide to sell, uh, you don't have to go get a fancy photo tent. Yeah, I've got one now, but I didn't get a photo tent until I was probably a year or two into selling. I just found a spot in my house that had good natural light up against a wall without any distractions, and I took pictures. Believe me, my first but I, I like to make fun of my pictures. They were horrible. Um, your first pictures will certainly be better than mine but take pictures of your item try to get as clear photos as you can and try to get every angle possible also make sure that if there's any flaws in your item that you get pictures of it because um the buyer's going to want to see that and then also get some measurements of your item i like to include those in the photos too because saying something is 
eight inches long and then seeing it with a, a ruler, it puts it into perspective when you actually can see how long that is. This is what we get when we go live, right? Cat meowing at the door. Okay, so let me share with you. So these are the pictures that I created for my item. Um, and I just use a piece of blue fabric and, and took pictures of this little dog figurine. And as you can see, I have just pictures of the measurements and then the flaws. There's some scuffing on the bottom. There's some scuffing there. So just making sure that I get all of the flaws for the item so that the buyer can see that. It is super tempting to downplay the flaws, especially when you're starting out because you want to get those sales. You want to get that feedback because the more feedback you've got, the more you seem like an established seller, people are more comfortable buying from you. It is really, really, really tempting to downplay the flaws to make the sale. But let me caution you against that because then you'll be entering into a whole new world of returns, which is probably not where you wanna go straight off. I know this from experience because when I started out, I definitely was wanting to make more sales. And so I downplayed flaws that I should have been just putting it out there over, wait, under promise, over deliver, that's it. All right, so that's third, take good pictures. Okay, so the next thing that you need to do is to create your title and your description. So once you've got your account, you've taken your pictures, you are ready to get your eBay listing going. So how do you write a good title for an item like this little dog statue? Let me caution you against using words like cute, adorable, things like that. You really want to think about the person that's buying this item, what are they going to type into the search engine? If you were looking for this figurine and you wanted to buy it for your grandma because she loves Cocker Spaniels, what would you put into search? You would put Cocker Spaniel statue, Cocker Spaniel figurine, and you want to describe it to the best of your ability. So the title that I came up with for this, and and I'll, hang on, I'll tell you something else. Just one second. <laughs> Let me grab the title. So the title that I ended up coming up with for this item was, you can't see it either. Here we go. Boop. Okay. Bronze, Cocker Spaniel, metal statue figurine, dog sculpture, standing tail up. I didn't know if tail up was going to make or break my listing, but I thought, you know, maybe somebody wants a happy dog with a little tail standing up. If you can't think of words to put for your title and you get stuck, you're like, I don't know, it's a dog statue. That's all you can think of. Then go and type it into a regular Google search. So Google search brawn, you know, dog. I put bronze cocker spaniel statue. That doesn't take very many words for my title. You want to get as many words that somebody might search for as possible into your title. So I, I would just do a search bronze cocker spaniel statue and see like what do other people put, you know? Okay, garden statue, maybe it could be. Look and see and don't copy and paste exactly what somebody else wrote, but it'll give you other ideas. Sculpture, there's one that I didn't come up with. Okay, this one's saying it's crouching. I can say mine is standing. So that will give you ideas for what else to put in your title by looking at that, at what other people put. So now that I've got this, I'm ready to create my listing. So get started. Once you are getting your title going, you can see I still have six characters left. So I could go in and try to add some more descriptors. I'm going to go ahead and leave it for now. And then it will help you come up with the category to put it in. That's collectible animals, Cocker Spaniel. So I don't have to do anything there. Now, here's where it says store categories. If you are just starting out, you likely won't have an eBay store yet. I didn't get an eBay store because you have to pay for that on you know a monthly payment. I didn't get an eBay store probably for at least a year or more because I didn't have enough items to make it really worth my while. So you don't have to worry about that if you don't have that condition used and this is where you'll fill in whatever's wrong with your you know mark on foot etc whatever it's going to 
have wrong with it. Then dropping your photos. Sometimes there will be item specifics here. I'm not gonna add anything to most of this because I don't know where it was made. It already filled in some of this for me. And now when you get to your item description, this is what I do. I take my title and I make that my first line. Bronze Cocker Spaniel, that'll be my first line in my description. This way, if I wanna add anything to this, I can go ahead and I can put, you know, cute puppy, blah, 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 whatever else I wanna put tacked onto that. And then for my description, I keep it short and sweet. I, it's just the facts, ma'am. Think about what your buyer wants to, wants to find out. When you're buying something, what do you wanna know? How big is it? Um, is there anything wrong with it? Does it smell funny? I don't know. Are there any marks on it? Is who made it? Think. Try to think of all the questions that the buyer might have. So typically, I put measurement, and then I'll type in whatever the measurement is. I'll put condition. This way, it also makes it super easy. I don't write a big paragraph. This way, it makes it super easy. So if the buyer is like, I just want to see like what's wrong with it, they can come down. Oh, condition. That's what I want to look at. They don't have to read through a whole paragraph, like trying to figure out what's wrong with it or, you know, um, maker, if there is a maker or maker's marks, a lot of times I'll, I sell a lot of jewelry. So I'll put something like maker's marks and then, okay, measurement size. And then I put inventory now, but you don't really have to worry about that. That's just for me. Um, so that's pretty much it i don't get really fancy i just try to keep it really simple when i started selling i did like try to flower it up and say imagine this really cute cocker spaniel sitting on your shelf bringing you joy every day and i'm just like that was a waste of my time now i just keep it straight and to the point you know so that the buyer can get in there because if, I mean, think about how you buy things. You're not there to read like a, a passage about, you know, this little dog's name. I, I like to imagine his name is Coco and he licks my face every night. I don't know. Anyway, keep it to the point um, and then you'll be good. Because that takes a lot of the extra clutter out of your mind and out of the listing as well. All right. So the next thing to think about is how you want to sell it. Uh, well, you can't see the page. I'm not sharing it. So the next thing you want to think about is format. So are you going to sell this item on auction or are you going to sell it as a fixed price? Personally, I don't usually sell many things on auction. The reason is that I don't, I, I don't like to wait for the auction to end. I don't like to have to relist things. I I have a, I'm a very busy mom, right? And so I just need things to coast and sell when they sell and, and leave it at that. Now, if I have a collectible item that has a huge fan base and I'm like, oh, it could be like 300 bucks, it could be 50 bucks, it could be 500 bucks, I don't really know. So I have done it for like some Star Wars figures, um, things like that, but generally I don't. That being said, everybody has their own method and what they prefer. That's just the way I do it. I know lots of people like doing auctions. If you do choose to do auctions, let me encourage you to make your starting price the lowest or that you would be willing to take. Because if you start this off at 99 cents and nobody bids on it, and then last minute somebody sweeps, swoops in and pay, says a dollar, then you are selling it for a dollar. And that's the way it goes. <laughs> so definitely if you do auctions put the lowest that you are actually comfortable taking for the item so that being said let me jump back over here i'm going to come back in the chat i see y'all saying some good stuff so i'll come back in the chat and at the end to see if there's any questions or clarifications that i need to address i do fixed price i do good till canceled um, that way it just automatically renews the item. I don't have to think about it. It's on autopilot and I don't have to mess with it. And then my buy it now price, when you're coming to figure out your price uh, and you're not sure what to price your item at, you can do many different things to figure out the price. It's totally up to you. You can, one of the things I do is I come just search it on Google and I see what all pops up 
when it says at the it shows up at the top the different ship you know shopping there's Etsy there's Wayfair Etsy who's all these different sites so it's sort of a cross section of the internet and statues of little dogs and so I'm seeing all kinds of you know statues I see one here 45 bucks it's kind of like the one I've got that one's too big no that one's like 58 so it's closer to my size so find something that's comparable to what you've got um, another thing you can do is to check on eBay and look at the sold items I don't always go off of that because some people sell their things too low they're on auction there's just so many variables so I just kind of do a cross-section of Google sometimes I'll go check the eBay sold I'll see a look on Etsy and just see what where where it's at all over the place and then make my price so let's say I decide I'm gonna sell it for $45 okay let me see if I can zoom this in so y'all can see it a little bit better there we go now the next step is to decide if you <clears throat> want to let people to you want people to send you offers on your item some people hate that and it drives them bananas Others don't mind it. I don't mind it personally. Oh, that made it too small. Okay, so let's say I'm okay with selling my item at 40 bucks, automatically accept $40. I can come in and tell and put like automatically decline it if someone's being rude and they're sending me an offer less than 20. I don't really think it's rude. I just said that, but um, people try to get a good deal. So lately, I and again, I can't remember who suggested it, and I feel bad about that. I've stopped putting automatically decline because sometimes people will send an offer and just to see if you know, like, hey, why not? You know, I like this. How about ten bucks? And I'm like, no. Uh, how about forty bucks? And then they're like, okay, cool, forty bucks. I'll take it. If I had automatically declined that $10, I wouldn't have the opportunity to send a counter offer. So that um, is what I would do as far as offers go. Now it's totally up to you. If you're new and you're like, oh, that kind of stresses me out, then don't even. Just, you know, don't even mess with, take that off, let, you know, and then there's nobody sending you offers or anything. You can always come back and turn it on. You can always come back and edit your listing and, and change that up. Okay, next up, uh, your payment methods, you'll get that all figured out, tax, blah, 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 that's depending. Okay, so the next thing you have to decide, we're, we're gonna talk about shipping, but before we talk about domestic shipping, let's talk about international shipping. You can, do they still do global shipping? I don't even see that as one of my options on here anymore. Uh, as far as I know, they still have global shipping, You'll have to tell me because I haven't done it in a really long time. Uh, you might consider holding off on doing international shipping as a new seller. Just personally, I struggled with that um, when I started, but I'm, you know, not everybody. And I so because I had some iffy sales internationally when I was just starting out, I did join the global shipping program, which is where eBay, I'm looking in the chat to see if they, uh, Pardon me real fast. If they still do <laughs> global shipping, I think they probably do. Anyway, um, but what it is is you ship it, like if, if you join the global shipping program, if an international person buys your item, then you ship it like you're shipping it to Alabama, and then eBay takes over from there, and then they they will take it and ship it internationally for you. That part was really good, and I did global shipping for a couple years because I needed to get more comfortable with the international shipping. And um, the thing to think about is that it's really expensive for your buyer. If you're fine with that, and I was for a while, because I was like, you know what, if they want it that bad, then that's just the way it's gonna be until I feel better about it. That being said, I sell on Etsy as well, and I've always sold internationally on Etsy, never had a problem. I don't know what the, the hangup was. But that is an option that's there for you if you're new. Uh, definitely something to think about, global shipping program. Okay, so coming back to shipping, I just wanna say that shipping was the number one hardest thing for me when I started selling online because I would under, cut myself I wouldn't charge enough I don't I don't do free shipping I just don't <laughs> so I would frequently say you know okay four dollars shipping that seems good 
uh, but it, then the shipping would end up being like $8 or $12 and it would cut into my profit. It still happens from time to time, truly, because I think I like, oh, I got this. And then I'm like, oh, that's bigger than I thought it was. So it still happens from time to time. So here's what um, you need. Uh, so you need a scale. I don't have a fancy scale. This is just a food scale. I had a Weight Watcher scale forever that I was using. Then I got this at a garage sale and it, it it's a little more accurate. So you will take your scale, take your item and weigh it. Now you think, okay, that's it. You No, you also have to think about the packaging. Where is it? It's behind here. It fell over. Um, because your box is going to weigh something. You're, even though you, you may have tissue paper, it's not weighing that much. You've got to consider how much it all weighs. So take all your items. And I do suggest like, if you've got something you're going to sell, try to make sure you know how you're going to ship it in advance so that at the last minute when it sells, you're not scrambling to try to figure out how you're going to ship it out. So take all the stuff that you're going to need, put it all on the scale and weigh it. And then when you go to create your listing, you can come in and decide, is it first class? A first class package is something that weighs a pound or less. And then anything above a pound is going to be either first class, I mean, um, priority. Now I use USPS, I don't use the other ones. Um, priority, if it's like figurines or whatever. But if it's a book, you can use media mail book, CD, things like that, um, or parcel, which is ground. So if you're shipping perfumes or, cause you can't send that through the air because of alcohol. Anyway, these are all the things, the wonderful things you get to learn about um, that you never know you needed to know. So priority is how it's gonna go, right? So you'll just select that. Your handling time is how many days are you giving yourself to get it packaged up and shipped out? I do one day, so I make sure that I, if I make a sale, I have it ready to go out the next morning. You don't have to do that. You can do two days. You can do 10 days. You can do 30 days. It will probably affect, if you know, if you do 30 days out, they, they might reconsider <laughs> buying from you. Um, so here's where you decide. You can do calculated or you can do flat. So let's say, okay, I'm going to ship this out. It's going to cost $8. I don't care if you're in Kentucky or Florida or Hawaii. I want $8 to ship this thing out. That's how I do it on Etsy. I don't, I don't know why I, don't, I do, don't do that over here too, but I don't. So I do calculated cost. Um, so wherever they live, they, they'll put in where they live. And then you'll come down and you will put in the weight. So let's say all of my box and everything was like one pound, six ounces. A lot of times I will add, I'll just round up a couple ounces just to have a little like just in case, you know, I'll say nine ounces instead, just throw a couple ounces on there, just as a little cushion. I'm sure I'm probably skipping something. So, and if I didn't want to do worldwide, I could say, oh, just to Canada or just to these places if I want. Okay. So, and I do not always add in the, the dimensions of my package here because I don't always, you know, maybe it's going to go in this box. Maybe it's going to go in another box. And then I wanted to say also, I know the, the packing material I have is, is eBay branded, but you don't have to have eBay branded material. If you're shipping something that is priority, you can look and see if I've got one handy. No, I don't. Um, you can get free priority boxes from the United States Postal Service. If you're in the United States, uh, you can go on their website and you can see where it says order free boxes. I have a video for that. And so those things, if you ship them in a priority envelope or a priority box, it has to go priority. But if you got a box from something you bought on Amazon or you bought from something else, then you can use that box totally. Uh, you don't have to use eBay boxes or priority boxes. I see your questions. I will definitely come and answer them in just a second. Okay, so we did that. Once you've got all that stuff done, you don't, this is all extra, extra stuff. Then you can list your item. Oh, you didn't even see what I was pointing at because I wasn't screen sharing. So then you can list your item. Uh, so here I've got my item listed. It's actually already sold. I just thought it would be a good opportunity to share because why not? All right, so once you have that done, 
you list it and then you can, there's lots of different ways to try to sell your item. You can share in Pinterest threads, different Facebook groups have Pinterest threads. You can share on Facebook. You, I mean, there's lots of different ways to promote your item. I don't do a whole lot of that personally. Um, I just don't. Okay, so let's say you finally sold your item. Now what do you do? So you're going to take your, your shipping materials and you're going to package it up safe, carefully to ship it out. Um, let me, I forgot to mention, when you're shipping things out, let me caution you against using food boxes. So don't ship in like a cereal box or a you know mashed potato box that you got or a, a liquor store box. <laughs> um, try to use boxes that look clean. And because this question is on what we're talking about, Teresa says, is it tacky to reuse boxes? I don't think so. I've reused Amazon boxes. Um, if it fits, I mean, I've got Goodwill boxes over here from when I got jewelry. I don't use thread up boxes cause those are super branded. They're like polka dotty all over like crazy. Um, but like if it's a clean looking, this is just a box that I got some other jewelry in, you know, it's a clean looking box, then I'll use it. And I have used Amazon boxes as well. Um, just not food packaging or things that look ratty or, or nasty, you know, nasty looking boxes. Um, Personally, that's, I don't do that because some people might have food allergies. You just don't know, you know, or if you're shipping it out in a box, you know, it's like tuna of the sea, you know, or chicken of the sea box. And what if you shipped it to a vegetarian or vegan and they're like, ah, oh. <laughs> you know, you just don't know. Hang on. So there's that. And then um, looking at my notes over here. So when you sell, you're going to ship it. So make sure that you are securing your item. I use tissue paper. Um, the tissue paper I get, you know, at, at usually at garage sales thrift, uh, or thrift stores, I'll find it, you know, for sale. And then sometimes I've had to order it, but truly not until i had been selling for a while did I ever purchase more cause I needed more. Um, but make sure that you ship your item very securely. Uh, I've got other videos about, about shipping. Now this doesn't really need bubble wrap, but I'm gonna you know, wrap it up just to keep it secure. I already did this in another video, that's why it's untaped. So, and then you'll put it in, I'm gonna fix it before I ship it out, surely. You'll put it in your box, I cover it up, and then I have a thank you card. This, ha this goes into the trying to get good feedback because the more good feedback you can get, the more um, confidence people have in purchasing items from your, sh your store. Don't message people and say, please leave me feedback. Where's the feedback? Um, because you just, you don't poke the bear, right? If, if they haven't done it, just leave it. But if you send a thank you card, now I, again, I make a thank you card on Canva but I didn't do this for years. What I would do is I had just blank greeting cards, you know, and I would find them at garage sales, thrift stores, had some lying around the house. And then I would just jot a quick thank you for your purchase and put it into the, uh, into the packaging. That was it. And, you know, and that can lead people to leaving a nice feedback for you. Um, so yeah, I do this now. I do create a little card now, but again, it's not something that's necessary. If you have just blank cards, that works too. Okay. And then I feel like I'm certainly leaving something out and then you'll ship this item out. So I'll box it up, close it up. And I have my just regular printer and I now I buy labels, the peel off stick on labels. But again, for years I didn't, I just used regular paper and I cut the label and I taped it on because I didn't, I didn't spend money on my business back then. I was in the business of making money, not the business of spending money. But now I do things to make it more smooth and streamlined because I do a lot more of it, a lot more shipping and stuff. So that's um, what I do. Okay, so then when you're done with that, next is, you know, repeat. Get your next item, start listing that and start selling that. The more things you get up, the more things you're gonna be able to sell. 
And yeah, so now at this point, I am going to start talking uh, or checking in the chat, seeing if there's any questions, comments, things I might have missed, any any suggestions or tips that friends of the channel have, then I will share those as well. And if you are done watching this, I want to thank you for being here. Definitely go down there, hit subscribe, and please share this video with somebody that you think might also get some benefit out of finding things to sell online. It is a really great way to make extra income. That's again how I started. I just wanted I was married, I stopped working, I didn't feel right asking my husband for money, I wanted my own money, I was always used to having my own money, and so that's how I got started, trying to make sure that I had my own money, just to be able to go buy a coffee if I wanted, and I'll have to say, hey honey, can I have some money? So yeah, and then it, again, it just snowballed into being one of the main ways that I support my family now, so it's definitely something if I can do it, you can do it too. All right, let me come into the chat. Uh, again, thank you everybody for being here. And sorry I didn't come and talk in the chat before. Again, I did, I, I re pre recorded this video beautifully. And then I went to edit it and it was gone. <laughs> so, yeah, I was perturbed to say the least. I see Joe's there. Hello, Rich University, my friend Joe. Hope you're doing well. You may not even be here anymore because that was a while ago. Hello, hello. Okay, let's see. Teresa says, I've been wanting to get started for so long. It can seem really daunting, but it truly is something you can do. It really, really is. Take one thing at a time, one step at a time. And when I started, again, my pictures were not amazing. My descriptions were not amazing. And it was just something that I would slowly start working on one thing at a time. Okay, I'm going to really work on getting better pictures. I'm going to really start watching videos and, and figuring out how to take better pictures. Okay, got that nailed down. Next, I want to really start working on making sure I do better with my shipping. You know, how do I do that? Like, so just take it bit by bit, little bites, baby steps, right? Okay. So, oh, thank you so much, Lydette. I appreciate that. Um, I'm looking, I'm looking. Do you, oh, I missed the, I have to see. Oh, wait, here we go. Sunny Girl says, do you sell the same thing on multiple places? I do. Pardon me while I take a sip. This may be my last diet, Dr. Pepper, too, but that's uh, news for a different channel. Um, I do. I cross-post my items on Etsy, eBay, Mercari, and Poshmark when I can, depending on the rules of the platforms. I use List Perfectly, which is, again, a site is a paid site, but it helps me list things quickly and cross multiple platforms. So I do, so that I can get more buyers' eyes on my items. Ah, uh, yeah. Carol says, I want to retire, but I need more income. I want to be a reseller. You can totally do this. It, I think it's a great, I mean, I, I know so many, I bet if we asked in the chat right now, I bet a lot of the friends of the channel are retired and are doing this to make extra money. I know several that do. Okay, let's see. You can totally do it. Look, there everybody's in the chat giving you props and cheering you on. Yay. So, hello, Pamela, long time watcher, first time live. Hi, thanks for being here. Oh, okay, how can you tell if it's bronze and brass? So brass has got a different um, sheen to it, like a, I have to look, truly. I have to, you know, look at them side by side. But that's how. Um, it, and the same thing with copper. It took me forever, especially with brass and copper. I have to see them side by side. But now I can do it, definitely. Um, put the size in, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Size would be a good, oh, the size would be a good thing to add to the title. Yeah, that's true. So as far as the dog goes, because as we searched on Google, we saw that there were some that were much larger. So we could say that it's a small, we could put the actual measurement, you know, whatever it was, six, eight inches long. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so Instagram, people put cute descriptions. eBay is kiss, which is keep it simple. And we'll say sweetie. Keep it simple, sweetie. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, Oh yeah, Alicia says, I never did that in the beginning, but now I try to put the size into the title. I definitely do that with rings and certain jewelry items. I put the put that in there. And it's a good idea, especially if you have space, if you feel like I need more descriptive words here. <clears throat> Pardon me. 
Um, Teresa says, I write things in paragraphs. I told, I did that for a long time and then just realized this is taking me too long. Really taking me too long. Okay. Hello, Lee Blue Monster Thrift. I'm so glad you're here. Okay. Okay, we find WorthPoint is a very good source. Oh yeah, WorthPoint's a good place to, I, I don't pay for WorthPoint. This is a, so um, it's something to think about if you get to that point where you're really wanting to improve your business, you know, it might be worth checking checking it out. And if you have an eBay store, you get Terapeak for free. I have an eBay store. I never even look at Terapeak, I guess I should. So yeah, global shipping is good, especially for new sellers. And that was, again, I did switch to that for quite, quite a while. Hello, Jersey Shore. <laughs> I love the dog. Let's see. <clears throat> Oh yeah, I like the buy it now option only. I can send my own offers and the customer feels like they're getting a deal. This is true because when you once you have items up, if you've got people watching your item, eBay gives you the option to send them an offer. And so you can say, send offers to people that, let me see if I can pull it up so you can see what I'm talking about. Might be more helpful. I am a show me, don't tell me kind of gal. So I kind of assume others are as well. So when you have got people that are watching items, it's it's loading over here and then I'll show you. Then you can, let me scroll, well, let me scroll up. Here we go. Ah. Hang on, add to stream, there we go. Then over here, this is where I, I'm looking at my items for sale, my active items. But up above that, you can see, hang on, let me hide your comment real fast. You can see send offers eligible. And if I click on that, then those are there's 11 items there that people are looking at that I can send offers to. So I can come over to the side. That little circle-y thing, if you're like, what is that? I don't have that on my, that's for a list perfectly. If I wanted to cross list something, I already have. So don't worry about that. <laughs> Unless you want list perfectly then we'll talk about it. So, and then I can come over here and click send offers and I can come and put another amount. So I have it listed for 45 bucks. Let's say I want to send them an offer of 40 bucks and then they can accept it or not, you know, so that's what that is. But it's definitely something I check almost every day. I try to do it every day. <laughs> oh, I just saw we have a $10 super chat come through. I'm trying to see if I can, I don't want to lose my spot in the, in the in the thing oh thank you just showing you a little less support appreciation for all that you shared thank you so much lorinda i got a dancing pickle for you oh wait i didn't want to give you a big dancing pickle not a little one there we go big dancing pickle for you thank you for that super chat um i appreciate it okay let me go back up to the the part in the chat um that i missed let's see where am i okay worth point we talked about that and shipping is my biggest fear. I'm worried I'll ask too much for shipping. And here's another thing I did when I first started out because I was worried about that too. And so sometimes my shipping was too much. I would put a line in my listing that said, I will refund any shipping overages over $2. So if the person bought an item, they bought my dog and I charged $15 for shipping. But then when I shipped it, it only cost me $9. Well, I felt kind of like, I mean, some people were like, nope, they paid it, you keep it. I get that. But I felt like that wasn't my intention. And so I would refund the difference. If it was a buck and a half, no, I don't even worry about it. But if it's $2 or more, then I do. And I think also that might encourage the, the buyer to leave you good feedback. Like, oh, hey, you know, this person is reputable and honest and you know, they should charge too much and they refunded me. That was really nice. Okay. So to me, that's what I did. So it's something you might consider putting a little line. I need some water. Sorry. Um, saying I'll refund anything over $2 in shipping. Pardon. Sorry. Okay. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I always counter low wall offers. Treasure retriever says, uh, can you ship anything parcel select ground or is it specific things? I'm pretty sure you can send anything that way. It takes longer um, to ship, you know, to get there. But I'm, unless I'm mistaken, but I know for sure if you have any 
liquid flammable, potentially hazardous lithium batteries or perfumes. How do I know this from being at the post office so many times that those things can't go air because they are flammable and are not good on aviate in aviation. So they have to go ground. Um, is it tacky? Okay. We talked about that before I do it unless it's like, like I said, my thread up boxes, which are like polka dotty big all over the place. Um, but I, yeah, I reuse, I reuse boxes except for food boxes. So, and I saw somebody, uh, okay. JP, G, J, G, R, more mom says we can, you can buy, we recycle stickers. So the buyers realizes that we're being green. That's a really good idea. That's a good idea. Yay. Um, hmm. Hang on. Oh yeah. Um, resale therapy. I just bought boxes from Uline making ship eBay shipping a little easier. And I have used Uline. I bought stuff from them. The only thing, their shipping is crazy expensive, but I also have bought from Uline just because I use a certain size box a lot. And so I'm like, okay, I just need like a million six by four by four boxes, or I need like 3000 bubble mailers. I use a bunch of these and I know padded flat rates are also that like that, but that's a whole nother sh shebang. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Is eBay my preferred site to sell on? Yeah. eBay and Etsy are my top two. Mercari is coming in next after that, but definitely eBay and Etsy. I started on Etsy and then um, picked up eBay after that. So I, I, I was used to Etsy to start with. Oh, yay. We got another super chat coming in. Let me see where that is. Oh, Hey, uh, the ma Mastix, I'm sure I'm saying your name wrong every time. I made it to a lie. Woohoo! We're doing pickle dance today. You good with the pickle dance? Hang on. Oh, I got to find the pickle to give you the pickle dance. <laughs> Ready? And here we go. Pickle dance. Pickle dance. Pickle dance with me. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that super chat. Oh, I have to turn off the pickle. Okay. <laughs> I know there are friends that can do the make it come on automatically, but I haven't figured that out yet. Pardon me, my nose itches. Okay, let me get back to where we were in the chat. Um, so, okay, I talked about that. Uh, yeah, I always like to leave a thank you note, definitely. And again, I still pick up blank cards when I go thrifting, if I find them at garage sales. Um, they're just handy to have around because sometimes, you know, I might run out of these or I just feel like writing a more personal note. Just a quick thank you. It goes a long way, really, um, for sure. So, okay. Ah, Anne says, I developed a network of friends from the local Buy Nothing Facebook group. It gives me Am Amazon bubble, poly bags, bubble wraps, boxes to reuse. That's a really good idea because I, you know, I have a ton of those pillows that I get, you know, from the little air pillows from Amazon boxes. And I'm sure, I mean, you could probably just tell the people on your street or right near you on your in your neighborhood, hey, if you get any boxes from Amazon or Wayfair, or wherever you shop, I would love to have the packaging materials to, to reuse. It's really a good idea. Bubble wrap. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, Polishek says, I'll be put this live in my garage as I'm organizing there. Yay. <laughs> You're being uh Okay, do I use promoted listings? I think I have a few things on promoted, but it's not something I use regularly. I The few things that I have put on, I just haven't seen a whole lot of, I, I didn't see a lot of um, benefit for me. So maybe I didn't do it right, which is a possibility. Um, Alicia says, my sales have been bad this week. Yeah, I need to go through and tweak some things. Yeah, and that's the thing too. If you're new and you're like, I think I might have done something wrong, you can always go back in and edit your listing. So just give it a try. And this is true. I, I've done this. I was in the middle of listing last night. I was listing rings and I realized I forgot to put the material on one of the rings. But I was like, I want to list this thing. So I listed it for like crazy high until I could go back and double check and make sure it wasn't gold. <laughs> It's like, if they want to buy it, there it is. Now I'll come back today and check, and then I'll go edit it if it's not. <laughs> but hey, that's what I did. Um, Brenda says, how quickly do you ship items that have sold? I try to do next day. So this little dog sold yesterday, so it's going to go out today. 
um, if I'm in the process of shipping or in my workroom and something else sells, then bonus, they get they get shipped out right away too. Sometimes, um, you know, things happen as they do. And so sometimes it's late. I know technically it can hurt your chances of being a top rated seller if you don't ship out when you say you're going to ship out. But I, I can't stress over that. Just life, right? I mean, I just can't. But yeah, I try to do next day shipping. <clears throat> um, how do I get lists perfectly? I have a link in the description below. It should be. Uh, and actually, I have a 30% off coupon code. If you enter when it, when you're checking out when it says any coupon codes, I think if you put in Texas Gal Treasures, I think that's my code, code code. It says it down there. Um, you can get 30% off your first month. So that would be, I would tell list perfectly, Margaret sent me, <laughs> which is nice. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah. So, so many YouTube videos for how to sell, what to sell, how to ship. Oh yeah. It's definitely so much fun. It's like a treasure hunt. Definitely. Um, yeah. Start with what you have and know first. That's what I did for a long time. Hiking clothes. And that again, me too. Like I would go to garage sales and I would look for things like collectibles. I was really into vintage stuff. So I picked up a lot of vintage stuff, vintage books, um, toys, and then just slowly started working my way out. <clears throat> I started selling men's accessories like cufflinks because I thought they were cool. They were often overlooked at garage sales. And then from cufflinks really branched out into other jewelry and it just sort of snowballed from there. So yeah, definitely. Uh, oh yeah. You got a goodwill box. Yay. How? <laughs> you know, I want to know. I haven't gotten one in a while. Um, mm, okay. Robin says, my sister and I started selling. You were our push. If we can do it, anyone can. Absolutely. She hit 1,000 and mostly stuff from her home. Totally. And that's the thing. Like right now, it's I, I can't get out because one of my kids has got a respiratory thing. But there's so much. I mean, one, I have tons of stuff already. But I could go around my house and find things to sell easily. Definitely. Uh, Lauren, this has been helpful. Oh, good. I'm so glad you can totally do this and you'll get more confident as you go. Definitely. Let's see for larger odd shape items. Would you recommend to just box it up and label what's inside? So it's ready to go. Yeah. And some people do that. Uh, that might be wise. <laughs> I had some pretty big star Wars stuff that I didn't take my own advice. And when it sold, I was like, ah, oh, now what? But I do know people, I think Bonafide Hustler Chris does that. I think but he does a lot more clothes and stuff. And he has like a whole labeling system. And he has it ready to roll, like shirts and everything. It's all labeled. And he just grabs it when it sells. And just all he has to do is put the label on it. So it's definitely something to, to especially for odder thing, odd shaped items that you're like, okay, I'm just going to have that ready to go. So for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you for adding those question marks so it can grab it easier. Uh, when you buy things from yard sales and you don't have a receipt, how do you account for your cost for your books? Like my, like taxes. <laughs> I keep track. Um, I have like a little notebook and then I'll write down what I, what I paid for things, which is what I use my inventory note for in my listing. So when it sells, I know what my cost was, the cost of goods sold, which is part of all of that. I'm not a tax person. Get a tax person if you get really super into this and pay your taxes. I know some people that I don't. <laughs> so definitely pay. If you make any money, you have to pay your taxes. So, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I still use global shipping for bulky items. Send everything else smaller. To That's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I used to keep a spreadsheet. Yeah. As far as that goes. And I would, it just became too much for me because I would take my little notes and I would come home from garage sailing and then I would enter everything into my spreadsheet and it just, and then when it sold, I had to go search my spreadsheet to find what sold to find out the cost of goods sold so I could figure out my profit. Um, and so I found it so much easier just to put it into my listing that way it's, I don't have to go searching for it. It's right there. That's just what I did. Okay. Oh, yay. You can totally do it. The past week I sold three on Mercari and four on eBay. Double my sales. Yay. And I tell you, every little bit, every little bit counts. Every little bit rolls up and it's profit, right? 
Um, okay, Chris, I have so many sales without feedback. How can I politely ask for feedback or should I leave it alone? I would generally leave it alone. And if you don't leave it, if you don't send a thank you note, you might consider that. I found that when I started sending a thank you note, it really increased my the people leaving um, comments because if there's any reason that they're not happy and you're like, Hey, leave me a comment, leave me feedback. They might not leave you good feedback and that's not what you want. I'd rather have no feedback than bad feedback. Um, so yeah, that's something to do. And this, I mean, they, I don't think they cost that much. And I put even on there, like, if you love it, upload a picture with your review. And that's actually done, gone really well, especially on Etsy. I've had a lot of people upload, a picture of the thing that they purchased where in its new home. So that makes it really fun and personal too. Um, yeah. Um, oh boy. If I overpriced shipping, I had no idea I could give it back. I just assumed they got the difference, but no, <laughs> no. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. I didn't even think about pr pr proving your cost. Do you count cost wear and tear gas? Uh, yeah, I do gas. I do mileage. I um I use GoDaddy Bookkeeping, and there's a place there where you can write your mileage for the month. So I do that. And if you're working out of your home, again, I'm not a tax person, but you know I can write off a portion of my lawn crew. I can write off um because this room is my office, so it's my home office. I can write off a portion of my house. I can write off a portion of my bills. Um, but again, talk to a, a professional about how to figure out those numbers, unless you're good at that stuff. But I am not. So that's why I pay somebody. <laughs> she just tells me, I need this. I need that. Tell me these numbers. And I say, okay. And that's what I do. <clears throat> okay. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> Basically, so the love of your necklace is my, it's a, an octopus and it's made from forks. Isn't it fun? And I don't think I have an octopus, but um, we have Lady Rainicorn. How about that? Lady Rainicorn says thank you. Thank you for that super chat. <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay. Um, am, I, am I still doing private instruction? <sighs> Not really. What I am doing, uh, because I was doing one-on-one, -on -one and I stopped doing it. And I, because I started the join button on the channel. So what that means is if you select the join button and you choose to join the channel, then there are different levels uh, where on certain levels I do tip videos once a month or a tutorial. And then on the highest level, we're going to be doing, well, so far I've been doing a whole nother, just like whatever topic the group wants, but we're going to start planning a, a day and a time so we can all kind of be there and any questions anyone has, or if we want to do a shop review or so it, I'm able to really focus in on what everyone wants or what everyone needs. So that I found that to be the best way for, for me and for the, for the people that were for wanting that. But I also take, you know, for the people that are, are in the join, I don't know what to call it, membership of the channel. Then I'll say, you know what, hey, what are y'all looking for this month? What What's an area that y'all need some help with that I can make a tutorial video, like a quick 10 minute, like here's how you do that or here's some, you know, then that's um, the place that I'm doing that now. Yeah. Okay. So, and I've said this before, get it. Oh yeah, get a good accountant who knows online business. Yes, definitely. Hmm. Okay. We don't have to pay taxes on items that we sell that belong to us. Ah, oh, that's a good point. I'm not sure. Yeah. Cause you've already paid taxes, right? That might be the case in the U S but again, not a tax person right here, but that makes sense because when you bought it, you already paid taxes. And if you're, I mean, like you're paying double taxes, I don't know. This is a good question that I don't have the answer for. Maybe somebody will leave a comment in the, after the fact, Okay, I hope that I tackled everything that you had questions about. And again, I do have a goal. I'm trying to, to grow my channel. I'm trying to get my channel to 100 
thousand subscribers and I am putting it out into the universe and I would love it if you shared my channel my video I've already had some of you share my channel on your Instagram feeds and tag me and I appreciate that so so much and tell your friends you know hey come watch Margaret's channel or go subscribe to Margaret's channel and yeah um, lots of fun information lots of fun and lots of information and a great great community of friends that come to hang out in chat. So I would appreciate that so much if you could do that for me and help me meet my goal. And I will uh, talk to you on the next one. Thank you so much for being here. Bye.